This is Change the Conversation. I'm Natalia Loback, the founder and principal of Chart House Advisory Services. And I'm here today with Stephanie J. Marshall, who is an alignment coach and the founder of Kickstartology. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, how are you doing? So I'm great. Um, for the viewers, can you tell them a little bit about who you are and what you do? Sure. Um, I'm an alignment coach. And what is that? Basically, I help women who feel a bit stuck or they don't know what's next or they just everything's going well except that one part of their life that they can't figure out and i help them become thrilled with their life and basically it's big picture small picture we get into mindset self-image also what they're doing and we go from there it's amazing and i have to say as someone who uh, worked with you and did the program it made an incredible difference for me in my life, in my work, uh, everywhere. So I can't say enough good things about it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, and I so, have the best clients. Have I mentioned that? Like the best. Oh, you flatter me. You're so sweet. Um, so, you know, one of the reasons why I was so excited to have you on this conversation is that, you know, a lot of people who are working in change, we have some of the similar challenges and struggles. And, you know, one of the biggest things that we run up against in change is emotions. I always talk about change being a journey of, it's an emotional journey. Like change is the destination that we all want to get to. It's our vision, it's our goal. But the process of management of change is actually emotional management. Um, yeah, so can you tell me a little bit about that from your perspective? Sure. I love, I love the opening and it's so true. And I just had a flashback to when I was in corporate, um, which I spent many years there and now I'm not. And one thing I learned the hard way is denial doesn't work. Right. <laughs> I so tried true. it. I tested it. You guys like, just so you know, but the thing is like, it's going to bring up feelings in yourself. Like if you're changing things, of course, you're going to feel things when change is thrust upon people. Look, as humans, we're naturally resistant to it, but it's going to call the, the feelings. And so often I've seen in corporate change, people try and be like, okay, well, if we tell them this, that'll make them happier, right? And they're trying to control the emotions of people. Like, let's try and make them feel this way, okay? And it would be really convenient if that worked and we could change the feelings of other people. Um, and we can influence it, no doubt, but it's something that often we think we like, it's people act like they can control it. They know intellectually they can't, but you know, they make plans based on it again, and they don't leave enough room for the subtle changes in emotion. And just really quickly, what I want to say is very often, it's like, oh, people aren't going to like this. How do we make them happy? And well, has anybody ever yelled at you to relax? Oh my goodness, all the time. Okay, has right? it ever in the history of the world worked? <laughs> like never. Um, right. And I'm sure the viewers agree, like that never works, right? Yeah, so like along those same lines, let's say there's change going on in a company and people are miserable about it or stressed. You can't just say something and be like, oh, okay, sorry, I was stressed, but now I feel great, right? And the way humans cycle through emotions is it's small shifts. And you can't make totally stressed to, I feel happy, right? So I just always want to point that out. It's about making small shifts. When we start to look at it that way, it's like, okay, well, what are they feeling? And everyone's going to be different. But yeah. It's so true. And, you know, that's the thing. Like so often when we're introducing change into an organization, into a community, into a group of people, you know, people are surprised, especially leaders. Like I always see this with leaders that they're surprised at the diversity of emotional responses that comes back. And, you know, I am constantly trying to help people through that and say, you know, we need to anticipate and expect that people are going to have potentially strong reactions on a wide variety of like, you know, on a big broad spectrum, right? Um, and in fact that you can't control them. You should expect that response. Um, but you know, from a leadership perspective, it really matters how you yourself process 
and respond to those strong stimulatory responses that are coming back. So can you tell me a little bit about how you help people work through that? Yeah. So when there's a lot of uh, change happening and there's a leader in charge, I work with people who've had a level of success. And one of the things when it's that, they're like, okay, we just need to get this done. They want to go into the action. They want to go into the particulars. I mean, actually the change managers, especially I've worked with, I think three of you right now. And you're like, okay, let's get in the weeds of details. And I'm always like, whoa, hold everything. Can we just pull this out to the like big picture macro level? What do you want this to be? How do you want your organization to look a year from now or two years from now, right? Actually, I, I usually go further and I'm like five years from now at least, because if I say shorter, the leaders that are that like to do calculations in their head, they're doing the math about how they can get there. I'm like, stop doing the math in your head. What do you want it to look like and feel like when it's done? right down the line and when you start with that it becomes a lot easier to accept the fact that there's going to be ups and downs along the way to get there because you know where you're going right because the other way it looks like everything is life or death exactly because everything you know it's it's like every single peak is a mountain to die on right as opposed to part of the process and part do you know how exhausting it is if you're in like live or die every single day Oh, so exhausting. I mean, if it worked, I'd yell, tell them to relax, but it doesn't work. So, I mean, (laughs) right, yes. (laughs) Um, You know what? There's so much more for us to talk about. Um, For today, we're going to stop here. And I invite our viewers to tune in for our next conversation where we're going to dig a little deeper into vision and the importance of vision in setting that path for change. So, thank you so much for joining me today, Steph. And you're welcome. Thanks for having me. I look forward to speaking with you again. 